I work with the Ice Cap Scientific Association. That's the premier incoherent scatter radar organization in the world today. Uh, we're operating in the north of Scandinavia, all across the north of Scandinavia. We have three huge radars, two of them uh, close to Tromsø, about 400 miles inside the Arctic Circle, and the world's finest radar at the moment on Spitsbergen, which is 600 miles from the North Pole. And all of those radars are predominantly studying the atmosphere, but of course they also do many other things as well. On the 12th of June, we're going to transmit a powerful signal uh, towards a star in the constellation of Ursa Major. It's called 47 Ursa Major. Um, that constellation is known in Britain as the Plough or the Big Dipper. It's a very well-known constellation. It will be high in the sky at that time in the summer. The uh, important thing, though, about 47 Ursa Major is that it has already been detected to have at least two planets around that star. They're big planets, they're the size of Jupiter or bigger, so they won't have life on them as we know it. There won't be people living on them. But the important thing is that it has also been shown that there is a habitable zone around that star. And so there is a good chance that there could be an Earth-like planet in that zone. Currently we don't have the technology to detect that directly. Um, and if there is an Earth-like planet, then maybe there are beings on it that are not unlike us and who will be equally excited to receive this signal as we would be to receive a signal from them. Okay, I think the Doritos broadcast project is a really interesting um, initiative because it sets out to deliberately send a message towards a planet that, or a star system that may well uh, harbour a planet which is not dissimilar to Earth. And so by actually setting out to get the public to, uh, to generate those sort of messages that we would like for mankind to send uh, towards another civilization. That's a really exciting thing to be involved with. Um, when we transmit the signal from the radar, um, it will travel away from us at the speed of light. All radio signals travel at that speed. And uh, so that means that it will go past the moon, or that sort of distance, in a bit over a second. It will be at about the range of the sun after about eight minutes. And it will be out of the solar system, so beyond Pluto in a matter of some hours, maybe five, six hours or so after we transmit it. After that, it's a very long time before it gets anywhere else, because now we're talking about 40 years or more before it reaches the vicinity of the star that we hope is uh, inhabited by an alien race that will be pleased to hear from us. It's interesting to wonder what the aliens will feel when they, uh, when they receive this signal. But I hope that they will be really excited by it, because this will be a signal which is obviously not random. It didn't just appear naturally out of the universe. There's some intelligence behind it. And that's exactly what we uh, look for in the SETI projects, where we're looking for signs of life from other, other stars. We're looking for something that stands out from the background noise as being clearly something with intelligence behind it. And we'd be really excited the day we see that signal, and so I believe that the aliens should be equally excited. I hope they are. They're not like us if they're not.